And I can see we've got a lot of people here today. It's a very packed webinar, really huge. And the first thing I want to do is welcome everyone, of course, to Cloud Movie Machine, aka also known as VidWorks, for those of you that purchase VidWorks. VidWorks uh, was the first name of this. Now, can you guys hear me okay before I go any further? If you can hear me, let me see a one in that chat box. One, 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 one. Okay, awesome. Okay, great. Fantastic. Now, before I go any further, once again, let me just tell you how happy and thrilled I, ha I am to have all of you with me today. I'm just absolutely thrilled for you to be with me. And um, you are going to love Cloud Movie Machine. There's no question about it. There are some things, though, that you, you know, that I want you to understand to get the most out of your purchase. And the kind of the one thing that I want you to know right away is that we are absolutely glutted with traffic right now on uh, Cloud Movie Machine. And this is absolutely freakish. It's a freakish amount of people, you know, using this system. So there are errors coming up. And I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to dance around with you about it. We are definitely having issues with scaling this to the amount of ridiculous, crazy, freakish traffic that we have on the system right now. So I just want to tell you that this system does work. And bugs are minimal, it, but it's not the bugs. It's not bugs that's causing the problem. It's overload, okay? And so if you do, if you are using Cloud Movie Machine and, or VidWorks, you get a message that says, you know, um, I'm sorry the server reported an error or, you know, we lost contact with the rendering queue or whatever. You're going to see those messages. That's exactly what is going on. What's happening is you've got like 100, 200, 300 people clicking the render button at exactly the same time or thereabouts and it's just failing for everyone so firstly i definitely do apologize for that but um i also want you to understand that i mean i'm happy i'm super happy to have um lots of people lots of customers um but i'm not happy to see things fail and and finnard is asking me is it going to get fixed soon or when will it be fixed? It, you know, it's the thing is, there's, of course, I'm I'm working almost 24 hours a day, you know, to try to alleviate this issue. But what you need to understand, this is a freakish period now. You know, when you do a, a product launch, what happens is, you know, we have I think a hundred people on. Um, instant commissions on JVZoo and they're all mailing at the same time. So we are getting literally getting, you know, thousands and thousands of people coming in to see the offer and thousands of people buying the offer and hundreds of people logging in just now for this week. So it's not even a thing that can be fixed. It's just something that's going to die down as soon as all the affiliates stop mailing, which is going to be after tomorrow. I hope you understand that, okay? Because it's not about hiring people. It's not about buying more servers, which I'm already spending thousands of dollars on servers. It's more like, you know, um, just it's just a freakish amount of people jumping on the server at the same time. So what I want to do is ask you for your patience and thank you for your patience, of course. I have been a software engineer for 20 years. Some of you know me, some of you don't. I've been working with very high availability web applications since 1995. I was in charge of uh, a huge multinational corporation, their, their websites, their databases. I know about scalability. And just for you to understand, <laughs> this uh, Cloud Movie Machine, is the most, I'll spell this right, 
ambitious project I have ever done. And the reason why is because, you know, video rendering is not something that is, you know, particularly easy for a, a computer CPU. It's like a very high bandwidth problem, video rendering and video transferring and all that. And so what we've done here is we really built this into an online service that does that. And it's really, it's kind of like I really climbed up this mountain. I really tackled this mountain, mountainous problem, which is like, how do we create a system that can render videos for the public at large on demand, more or less? And I've been working on this now for almost a full year. We did a little um, kind of a mini launch when it was called VidWorks. Some of you, you know, were on that launch. And... Um, you know, so it, it actually worked quite well there. And I was emboldened to go ahead with a larger launch. And now that we have the larger launch, it's, uh, you know, we're seeing these issues. So I just want you to know, and I am going to move on now. And Alan says, I need a marketing person to soften my message because people don't care about my business explosion problem. They care about what's in it for me. Well, that's true, you know, but also, Alan, um, What's in it for you is also understanding what's behind this because Cloud Movie Machine, if it works, has never been built before by anyone. Nothing like this has ever been done by anyone before. And that's why I want you to understand what you're doing, you know, with it. Well, Enough of my blabbing. Let's get on to uh, to doing something. Thanks, John. I appreciate you appreciating me. <laughs> we have other people telling me, shut up and move on. So I guess that's what I better do. <laughs> yeah, another thing I don't call people out on a webinar. Okay, Alan. Why don't you just leave the webinar, Alan? I don't really care for your comments. Okay, so why don't you just go ahead and sign off, and that would be fine with me. Because what I want on, on this application is people that are with me, not people that are against me. Because if you're against me, you can just leave. You know what I mean? I've been in this business long enough. I really, really don't need all that kind of, you know, negativity. And a lot of people are kind of agreeing with me, so I'm sorry. Anyway, let's move on and try to get some work done. Now, I wanted to explain all that to you first because... Thanks, guys. Thanks for all the support. I'm getting, it really makes me feel good. Thank you so much. Now, I want you to understand what I said before, because it's very possible that while I demonstrate things to you on this webinar, it may fail. And I want to sit here with, you know, hang in the wind and saying, oops, what, you know, you have to understand that we are in this kind of a freakish situation right now, but I'm going to do my best and hopefully everything will work. It really depends, you know, how many people are trying to do it at the same time. And um, I've, I think I've been working 18 hour days since this started just to try to make sure everyone is getting what they want out of this. So. If I'm a little bit high strung at this point, I apologize. Not only that, but all the customer service that we've been handling. And people kind of don't really understand the workflow with this application. Thanks, Isabel. I really, really appreciate that comment. Um, you guys are, are awesome, man. I guess that you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. The thing is, like I've said before, this is not... Um, an application that's ever been built before. No one has ever done this. Awesome, guys. So you might not even really understand how the workflow goes with this application. And so what I, I see people kind of coming in. Not, not everybody. A lot of people are getting great, great results. But a few people are coming in and they're kind of like, this doesn't act like Camtasia, so it sucks. Right. And that we're seeing some comments like that. And it's definitely not 
like Camtasia. So you have to kind of change your paradigm if you want to get good use about, you know, through this. Yes, indeed, Wayne, it's the same. Guys are so awesome, and I just love these your comments. I'm reading them all. I don't I don't want to take the time to answer every one, but I see them and I love them. Thank you so much. Now, the first thing that you want to know is that how you're going to basically uh, organize your strategy. Bless you, Lisa. Thank you so much. Uh, so you want to organize your strategy first in accounts like. If you're a marketing, <laughs> you guys are great, man. Your comments are so awesome. I can't even get on with it, but it's so be it's beautiful. Let me just hide that. And I'm going to read them all later, okay, because it's just so nice. I can't tell you how it just makes it all worthwhile to see all the positive comments coming in. So let me just close that because I'll be there all day. So you want to be able to design a strategy you know, if you're into SEO, you want to do a strategy. If you're not into SEO, all you want to do is make an account and make videos. That's great. Just make an account called test. You're going to see this save changes come up and just save the changes. And then when you have that account, you can go right to the video section, right? If you are more concerned with SEO, then you're going to spend time on this because these data right here, it's what's going to be put onto YouTube and so forth. And it does work to get you rankings if you see my case studies. Let's go to the video section. Check some of these awesome um, comments again. Yeah, it looks like we're recording okay. I don't want you to leave, but it looks like the recording is working. You never really know till it's done. So now I've saved that account and I'm on to this section with the videos here. You'll notice we still have two selections here. We have the, the account and we have the template. The template really is the same thing as a project. It's a video project. I should I suppose I should change that. It's just that from the beginning we also we always call it a template. And the reason is because I have plans to allow you to use your existing or previously published video projects as templates for new projects and that's coming it's not it's not there yet but it's coming soon um yes i will build a video online for you to watch my style definitely ron um so so what we have on the videos page we have the selection of accounts and we have the selection of templates or projects if you have more than one account here you're going to see them all listed here. And you want to first select the account because that's under where your video is going to be put, right? So if you select a different account, let me maybe log into a, I have another um, one I can use that will show you what it's like with multiple accounts so, you, so it'll make more sense to you. <clears throat> So you see I have more accounts listed here. And the first thing I can do is go to the accounts page. And you'll see I have all the accounts listed here. By, by clicking on the account, it loads the, that account and targets it for saving and stuff. It also, when you select a, an account in the accounts page, it's pre-selected when you go to the video section. So it's kind of a shortcut. Okay, now I've gone to the videos page for this one, two, three account, and I was just testing, so I got some silly names for accounts. And you can see now in the second square here are all my videos for that account, my templates that have not been published. Now, if I click on a different account, say the SEO lunatic account, then it's going to load those account, those videos. And I have one video under that account. So if you're wondering, like, where are my projects? I can't see my project. This is how you get to your projects, okay? First, you have to, you know, make a note of which account. And you should know that when you're creating your video because the video itself should be tailored to the account 
that you're going to publish it under, right? So if you have one account that's for, let just for the sake of demonstration, let's say we have one account that's about weight loss, and we want to make videos about weight loss, and we want to put those videos on a YouTube channel about weight loss, right? If we have a create another account that's about dog training, and then we're going to under that account, we make videos about dog training, and then we post those videos on a YouTube channel about dog training. And that's how we strategize our accounts. Before I move any further, I want to say one thing that you need to know so that you don't get into problems. You cannot authorize the same YouTube account for more than one time to this program. Where you're going to have a problem and then you're going to have to like unauthorize everything and start over so don't make multiple accounts and try to have them all posting to the same youtube account it's one one time use of the youtube account in this application will keep you working well Um, perhaps sub accounts, but that's something different, Gary, because that's the architecture is different. In fact, I actually have plans to really make you real sub accounts, which means you can have logins under your login and then have these type of accounts just specific to the sub login, right? So I have these plans for, for this all in place. It's just not uh, executed yet. <laughs> so now we've got, I'm going to select this test video and I'm going to go to the video designer and I have a lot of stuff in here and that's quite a lot, but I do believe that the preview was made fine. And I, in this video, I did everything. I did the clip editor, I did backgrounds, I did clip generator. Anyway, I won't um, bore you with the whole thing. That's right. You, you make 10 videos for the YouTube account. You make multiple videos. You set up one account. I um, hope you can hear me okay. You set up an account with a video channel attached, with a YouTube channel attached to it. And then you pump your videos to that channel, right? Now, if you're losing the sound from me, that's because when I open the video, it downloads that video from S3 and it hogs the bandwidth. We always have problems trying to demonstrate things on web on GoToWebinar. It's just the way that it goes. I'm sorry about that. You will probably, you will hear it perfectly. You will probably see an issue as I go forward, but we'll see. Um, that's right, one account per YouTube channel is the best way, and do not authorize the same YouTube channel more than once to this application or you'll have problems. Noble Media, you're, you did not understand that correctly. You're, what you said is wrong, okay, and this is what you said and it's wrong. For every video, we have to have a separate YouTube channel. Wrong. You can make many, many, many videos and just put them all to one YouTube channel. Does that, you got it? Okay, I don't want you to get that wrong. Okay. All righty. Hope, hopefully, it's that's understood now. The thing is, you, you set up a channel and then you put lots of videos on that channel. Okay, but just don't do the same channel more than once on another account is what I'm saying. Okay, let me try just a new video just for the heck of it. People are wondering, um, and one question that I get a lot, and the, the audio might cut out because of the bandwidth, but people ask me, I can't save my pro, you know, my video. The thing is, I believe you're, that people that ask that question, they're not really quite understanding so I'm going to make, this is going to be SEO lunatic number 200. This is your title. You should always give it something so you can recognize it in the list, right? I have a, um, 
I have a video all about the YouTube channel, how you set it up. So I, rather than waste your time with that today, I'm going to say just go into the training section and watch the video about YouTube authorization. You can authorize as many YouTube channels as you want. Just don't authorize one more than once. Okay, that's the main point. So you want to change your title. This headline has the the YouTube keyword tool built in. If you want to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and save now so I can start playing with the video stuff because what I really want to show you is um, uh, you know, some of these features if I can get them to work. <clears throat> Once again, they work, they were absolutely fine. The code is, is good, but what happens is when server chokes and d data gets a little bit messed up. Like I said, I'm working on that. So let's just go here and check out what we can do. I have nothing on the timeline, right? So that the idea is to create visual content. The way that this works now, the length of the video is based on the visual content. You know, currently we also do not have any audio editing. We only have audio overlay. However, audio editing is coming. But first, we're going to do it, you know, the original way. First, I'm going to show you the quickest way to make a video and get it ranked. And I already did that, you know, I already did that on the case study, but it, it's so easy to just pick some images, you know, from a niche, like Let's see, let's say I was in a hotel. And I don't think Hotels of Miami is gonna rank because it's just way too, um, way too much competition, but like auto repair in Midland, Texas, I really totally dominated that. I don't really wanna do any more fictitious companies out there, but I just wanna show you how to make a fast video, okay? Now, this is just images, this is not with video clips. But it works the same with the clips. All you have to do is click the plus one time. And that's all there is to it. I can click another one, click another one, click another one, and one more. And I like this one up here, so I'll do this one too. Now, what the heck did I just do, right? Okay, well, if I go back to the timeline now, you'll notice all six of those images are now on my timeline because I just clicked the plus button and that put them into my timeline of this project. Now I can actually go ahead and publish this now if I want to because that's enough. Let me go ahead and generate that preview. With any luck, it's going to work for us. Yes, it's going to take 30 seconds. Anyone who feels negative about this, you're welcome to leave. And so now we have this video, as you can see. It just fades between the pictures. It's not a big deal, but it's uh, it's a video. You know what I mean? It's it's beautiful. It's looks professional. <laughs> and it's a little movie, like you said. It's a little like I movie and we're going to continue to make it better and better and better. Now, if I wanted to do put a message on that, you know, I could do that too. If I open the feature designer, and now I could like put my phone number here. Let's say I wanted to say, it's my best phone number. I wish I had an 800 number for hotels. I'd just be out there promoting this stuff, but I don't. So I'm, I'll fake it up, you know. So we can do it with this. We can put a headline.
best hotel deals. Let's pick a city just for the heck of it. Um, I'm, I don't want to choose a big city because I'll never rank, see, I mean, without a lot of work. So if I pick a more of a smaller city, middle-sized city, I can probably rank with it. I'll take the first one I see, Anderson, South Carolina. Make that look good. I'm going to get rid of the best hotel deals. They're all great cities, guys. I had to pick one and go with it, you know. <laughs> so, um, can put the URL on and we can go uh, hotelsnc.com, whatever it might be. Change the color a little bit. And, you know, it's no big deal, but let's just go ahead and save the options. Now, when you're in the feature designer, it says this. In this screen, these features will be applied to your entire video. When you open the clip generator, it looks like this, but it's a different function. So in this one, you're going to save the options and cancel. And that's when I click this blue button. It applies to everything. Now, let me just go ahead and try to regenerate that. Hopefully, it'll work. Now, you know, I'm not, you may not want to do this kind of video. I'm just showing you this, and then I'm going to move on to another kind of video in a minute. <clears throat> you can do those font fades with our slide creator right now. Okay, so now you can see the video. It has the features that I put on it. Now, that's not quite fitting on the top, so I may have to do some work for that. Um, but that's okay because that's not really a text. Um, it's not really going to be read by the search engines at all. Not this text that's on the video. It's only read by people. Yeah, and it's super fast. That's because we're only doing images and a few text fields. We don't do 1080p, we do 720p. 1080p is, we might do that later for people that pay us a lot more money because it costs a lot more resources to do those huge 1080p videos. So we do full 720p videos. I will show you how, how you can do a, a voiceover recording. That's what people are asking for. Now, the text on the videos are not for anything but people to look at. So, yes, um, as a matter of fact, and you can make this, um, you can make this transparent, too, is what, what uh, Larry was asking me. You can also put it on the right, the left, bottom, medium and large size and all that. There's all these different um, things you can try. It does have a lot of potential for Amazon marketing. Now, Finn Art, as just as a general physical reality, videos do not have clickable links in them. They just don't have them. That's something that you have to add via YouTube annotations or some other third-party player. Because video is a video. A video is a video is a video. It's not a link. That's what we're making here. Now, anything that links on a video is from a third-party player, like YouTube or some other. Yes, you can add different text to each clip. So let me move on now and do that. So. Since we're going to do that, I'm going to get rid of this stuff that I have here already. Turn this off. Turn this off. Save it. And with any luck, <laughs> it will work properly and it won't get that put on again. So let me just, just make sure by generating that. I haven't really gotten familiar with the YouTube cards yet. 
Sasso. So awesome, John. Thank you. Thanks for the kind words, John Elmore. I appreciate that. Okay, and I have some other things to show you, and uh, it's coming up. So first thing we have to do is see if this preview is going to get rendered without a thousand people jumping on my process and killing it. <laughs> you know, that's just how it's going right now, as I explained at the beginning. We'll see. Can also check real quick. Uh, yeah, it's working. So. <laughs> If you if it can't render the preview like this, it's it nothing's changed on your video. It just means that something went wrong. So uh, can I try it again? Um, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot I can do except refresh the page right now. So, like I said, that's what you saw how it worked great like three times, and then the last time it just said. Bleh. Can't can't do it, you know. Like there's just a lot of people using it right now. Hey Lyle, thanks. Yeah, we'll be. This will be great. Just give it a week until everybody's not jumping on it all at the same time. It's gonna be fine. Um, Renell asked me, will it save it? It's saved. I mean, there's nothing to to not save because everything is still here. Now the question is whether the the preview was rendered and apparently it wasn't so let's try it again um gary wants to upload existing videos which you have which have blank areas at the end and we do have a facility for you to do that gary um it's called the clip editor in the visual section of the video. Now that time it worked. Okay, so that time it worked. I just all I want to do is make sure that we don't have that text on there anymore, and we don't because I removed it. Remember? So now we're going to do something different. It doesn't matter after midnight, West Thomas 44, because we have customers. Almost, you know, all over the world. Awesome, Wendy. <laughs> awesome. Now, um, you can put videos and images on the same timeline. I'm going to show you that now. So now I just showed you basically how to make, you know, a very simple slideshow video and put one bit of text on top of it, and you can use that kind of video for marketing just to get leads, right? And I showed you how I can rank those two. It's just silly how they rank once you publish them. Um, I didn't publish that one yet. Now, do you want me to, I could just go ahead and publish this and do another one, I think. So I'll tell you what, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add those features again. It's just, I don't, kind of silly, I should have just published it. I'll tell you what. What I would have done then is just click the Q button, you know, after I had the text on there, but I didn't do that. So let's just go ahead and I'm going to start again. I'm going to delete all of those and start over and I'm going to show you some new stuff now. That one didn't, didn't go. I don't want to. Somebody jumped on my process. Okay. So now we, as you can see, if you have the movie club or the premium content, you have extra premium images that show up here. You're going to get more every month. Regular users do have this whole list right here. All users get motion backgrounds, which I'm going to add a few more. And all users get set one, two, three, four, five of stock video clips. Now, if you have the movie club, you also have premium clips going down the bottom of this list. This particular account doesn't have the premium 
club for video clips on it, so I'm not seeing that right now. What I have is the VidWorks images and music um, subscription, which is why I have the extra images. I'm actually going to be adding to all the VidWorks club members the video clips too, so you can look for that coming. <laughs> Thank you, Ray Main. CCI, that's a nice comment. Appreciate you. Um, but, you know, I like to kind of keep my eye on what people are, are doing. Now, yes, you can upload images, videos, and audio. And, yes, you can still get into the club. On the home page at the bottom, there's a link for you. Hello, Tanya. Where you been? I need to make organizer. One moment. Alrighty then. So the next thing that I wanted to do was show you what happens when we click the other button here and not the plus button. So when we click the edit button for an image, we get the image opening up in what we now call the clip generator. And this um, this looks a little bit familiar with you, uh, familiar to you, because I just had this open when it was called the feature designer over here. The thing is, when you open it with a clip in it or an image in it, individually targeted, it's just going to apply those uh, effects to just one clip that you're going to create right now, and then that clip's going to go out of the timeline. So this is just an image, but we can now select a length of a clip that we want to make from this image. Let's say I want to um, make this a 14 second clip and I'm just going to say Hotel Deals Anderson, South Carolina. <laughs> Come on now. And we have the feature box. Of course, there's our, our phone number again. And I have some other things to show you too, but just taking this logically through its paces here. So now I've got this one image, and I make a 14-second clip with these features on it, and I want the feature to come in three seconds after the clip starts, and I want it to go away two seconds before the clip ends. So then I'm all set. I want it to fade in at the beginning and out at the end, so I'm just going to click Generate Clip, and hopefully that works. Now stay tuned, Sasso. I'm going to get to all of that. I don't really understand why you might say you would never use standard credits because the standard videos are, are quite nice. You know, so. Okay, so now I have this clip that I made. And I don't have a preview yet, but we will have separate previews for, for the clips. But right now, we just have the publish now. So if I regenerate that preview, it shouldn't take more than a few seconds. <laughs> All right, we're on dispatch. And now we have this clip. And you notice the feature box pops in a few seconds in. And then it pops out a few seconds before the end. And that's my clip. Now I could go here and make another one like this. And I could go, let's say, 12 seconds. And I'll, I'll make one on the right. This time I'll say... Um, Notice I'm hitting a line break after each one.
we'll see how that works. No guarantees, but we will see how that works. And we'll put this on with a different color and put the URL on with a different color. And then we're going to have this box pop open three seconds of the video and go away two seconds, rather three seconds into the clip and three seconds from the end of the clip. It'll disappear. So we'll generate that clip. <laughs> NDT rocking it. If you want to record your screen, you need Camtasia. Okay, so we don't have that yet. I do believe that we can eventually get to that, but your best bet is going to be do that, do the screen thing on Camtasia. Now it looks like I had a little bit of a problem here, unfortunately. So yeah, that didn't work. And Unfortunately, like I said, I, I knew some things were going to fail uh, today because of all the, the heavy traffic we have, but I'll try it again. Seems like I've got still got everything saved in here, so I can just turn it on again, reset my values, and try that again. Make it 14, I get 12, uh, 14 seconds. Try it. Yeah, use Snagit, use whatever, because the thing is, if you're recording your computer screen, it's a lot of data and it gets saved on your computer. So, how, is, how are we going to expect that to get up to? Um, you know, up to our server without a long upload, right? That one just doesn't want to work. I don't know why. I'm going to have to look at that later. I hope there's not going to be too many other things failing today, but let's try it with a clip just for the heck of it. I did this a bunch of times uh, yesterday. And when you load a clip by clicking that um, edit button, then you're going to actually be able to preview the video clip, as you can see now, hopefully. You can see the uh, <laughs> awesome Wendy. So you can see, you know, the Statue of Liberty spinning around here, right? So what we want to do is... Basically, I'm going to try, it's not hotels in Anderson. Let's try something else. And that's yeah, going slow for some people. That's the problem with video and servers and internet, you know, because how many of you have seen the show called Silicon Valley on HBO? Anyone? Well, if you have watched that show, then you know what we're up against because it's all about a startup company that has an idea to make the best kind of compression. It's, it's absolutely genius program. So it's like, Video compression is what it's all about, believe it or not, and um, that's what we're up against here. It's compression. It's about how to make the data as tiny as possible so that it can be transferred in a stream across the Internet. And um, that's exactly the same issue that we are dealing with here. I don't miss these great deals. Let's try. Um, how about love it or leave it? <laughs> I'm having fun, folks. Don't 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 pay any attention. I'm really not one of those people, but that's all I could think of right now. So, love it or leave it to Beaver. 
let's just see if that works for the heck of it. Now we got a 22 second clip. I'm just gonna do the whole thing. Try to make this thing pop in and pop out. <laughs> I used to live in New York too. I, I love New York, definitely do, but not really my favorite place to, to live. It seems that we've got a queued, so now it's just about waiting. I have a way of checking. Yeah, it's working, so hopefully that'll work this time. So I really, really do hope this works because it gets a little tired of having things not <laughs> working when you want them to. Uh, all Anyone who's come in to this webinar late, they've seen that, you know, I explained at the beginning that we're just having a, a huge influx of traffic right now that's ca it's definitely causing things to fail. So uh, yeah, that, did, that didn't work. So gosh what can I say we have been spoiled with technology what I'm gonna do regardless of things are working or not I'm going to just go through everything with you okay because that's why you're here it is rush hour on the internet I think somebody's mailing for this offer right now and we're getting a ton of you know people on this thing so I'll do I will do more webinars don't worry about that let me just show you now this upload section here I'm going to probably remove that the reason why I'm going to remove it is because there's a much better way now to do uploads and it's using this slide creator what we call the slide creator and you come to the, the visual section you click create and then you open the slide creator now this opens you to a, a canvas that's already the perfect size for cloud movie machine videos the text thing is a little bit weird you click the, the font and then you select the color then you click choose then you click save and then you have this text and you can do whatever you want with it that's not really what I was going to show you right now what I wanted to show you is why and how I'm going to use this to upload an image instead of the other section for uploading I'm going to click new and I'm going to click upload from computer and there's so much stuff here let me try and find uh, some kind of image if I can okay so here's an image it's one of the ones we have but let's just pretend it's my own image and um, I click that and now you can see it here right then you can click open and now you've got your image on your canvas I believe you can even add another image on top of that if you want to like You see that's on top of the other image now. I can actually resize this one. <laughs> it's a little pregnant baby with booties. That's really funny. It's from one of our niches that we have. So you can add as many images as you want on top of this. And it shows as layers like Photoshop. So you can do what you want with the, the layers. But the idea is like if you just have an image that you wanted to uh, upload, rather than use the upload section, the best idea is going to be to do this because it gets in the right format. Not only that, when you are ready to uh, put this into your timeline, you click Save to Timeline, and then you have two options. You can save it as a JPEG and open it in the clip generator just like we were doing previously that kind of didn't work when we tried to create the clip or you can save it as a PowerPoint clip and when it when you save it as a PowerPoint clip you can select the length of the clip that you want to make and you can select the fade in and fade out it works best at one or two seconds the idea of the fade out in 
is that what it does is it, it reads the image and picks the most dominant uh, color from the main image and then it sort of fades in from from white to that color and then fades it out again at the end. So if you have, let's say you have a, a like a PowerPoint style image that has white background and some text, then it's basically it's going to fade your text in right from the white. It looks really cool. It works really well. Let me just go ahead and see. I can save this as, I know it's going to save as a JPEG. Whether or not the clip generator is going to work today or not, I don't know. We'll see. We are uh, generating a recording of this right now. It does say that it's recording. If there's a problem with it recording, it always happens after the webinar, and then it, it could choke and die. I've seen it before, but only once. So chances are that we will have a good recording of this today. Hopefully, it will be helpful for you, too. Joan, if if I have a PowerPoint that has already been created in PowerPoint, can I add video to jazz up my standard PowerPoint? Probably. Not quite sure what you mean by that, but there's a, I mean, there's a lot of, if you can learn your way in and out of this, then some some bandwidth has prevented that image from showing up here. So we do have the image here. The image got put on the timeline, but it did the whole clip generator thing. That's right, Rebecca. Not only is GoToWebinar against me, but also just the fact that we have like thousands of users on the system right now that's causing intermittent failures. So. I do apologize for that. I'm, I'm giving you the theory about how this works. So when when the traffic dies down, and they're mailing for it right now. I think we had like two super affiliates mailing for this right now. So what happens is, you know, people buy and they want to get in right away and just start using everything. So I was hoping it wouldn't happen today. But the thing is I wanted to get in front of you guys so that you you know just know where i'm coming from i'm not just trying to drop you you know to the wolves here or whatever i could just keep trying this what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go through and um show you the features whether or not they work because i know they work but the, but the, if things are not working it's either because of go to webinar or because of the huge influx of traffic on the system right now, but I want you to know how it works anyway. We currently don't have the option for you to directly upload to Cloud Movie Machine because believe me, that would only lead to more of these bandwidth problems. Okay. But if you have you know if you're not familiar with Amazon S3 I highly suggest you just get yourself an Amazon S3 account it costs next to nothing I mean I'm hosting years and years and years worth of videos I'm talking thousands of gigabytes you know terabytes and it's only you know like ten dollars a month or something and I didn't even get that bill until it reached a certain point. So what you need to do is get Amazon S3 or any server on the internet and just upload your video there. Provide your link to that video here. For example, here's a video. You can also use YouTube videos in here. Let me just see. So I've, this is one of my vid works or one of my cloud movie machine videos that I made, and this is the link to it on my S3. So I can just, ay, 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 ay. <laughs> okay, that's that's something I need to fix. Apologies, <laughs> that should do it. But I'm going to have to reload this whole page now, so let's reload it. 
I know what that is. I, I'll get it fixed today. I think, I'm not sure about Google Drive because I've never tried it, Jay Hodge. But um, thank you, Craig. Uh, but it might, if you can get a direct link to a file on Google Drive without having to authenticate to it, then it could work. And why do you want Amazon S3? Because then you can upload your videos and get a URL for your videos. And then you can just paste paste it in here. I have, have some here that I already used, so let's try that again. And so now it has worked. <laughs> so it did download my uh, my video. And so this is a, let's see if I want to see that video, if I want to play it, can I just play it? Yeah. So I can play that video. S3 has nothing to do with selling, Wendy. It's just a storage. It's cloud file storage is what it is. That's all. It's cloud file storage. We can't, uh, we don't have enough space to let you store your files on our server. I am storing all your videos and your projects on our S3, and that's not a problem. It's like literally pennies for me to pay. Right, Gary? So, yeah, this is how it works. So, you can see I downloaded. <laughs> that was a movie that I made um, with Cloud Movie Machine for my CD. And so, I mean, it's not really the best one for an example, but just to show you, this is the video. I've grabbed it, it's now in the clip editor. I'll go over text-to-speech in a moment, Garen Green. So now what you want to do is, as you move this slider on the left, you see the, the frame that you selected, the start frame of the video on the left, right? Correct? So we'll start here, and then when you move the selector on the right, it shows you the selected frame on the right from the same movie where you want your cut to end. So it looks like I've got, it tells you here 1377 to 34. So that's like a 21 second clip. Now I'm going to put it down a bit more so it's like, who's that funny looking guy? Uh, so I've got, 15 seconds here. Now I'm going to click cut to timeline. And it should, it should cut the 15 seconds that I've got selected here and put on my timeline, if it works. <laughs> if thousand other users don't jump on my process, it'll work. Hmm. Yeah, it didn't work. Sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I mean... You know, I'm getting a lot of um, really good comments from everyone that, that you know, there you guys understand what's going on with the, you know, like just too many people on it on it right now. Just give it a little time. All this stuff works. I have just spent, I've I basically dedicated my life to this for the last year, so I know that it works. It's, and this is totally freakish traffic that we have on this thing now. I'm showing you how to use the stuff, you know, regardless of whether it's actually working or not. I'm showing you how it works. I'm going to try that one more time. Thank you, Garen Green. I really appreciate it. It says the clip has been added to my timeline. I will see if it has. I don't know. Believe me, when we get off this call tonight, I'm going to... Uh, you know, really, really jump in and just see if it, if it, you know, what, what's going on. It's like, I hate seeing all this stuff fail. It works perfectly for me. I really just think it's like too many people on it right now. <laughs> yeah, nothing works on GoToWebinar. Thanks to practice comp. 
I will do this webinar again next week. So I just wanted to go through over, you know, go through everything. Now let's go to the audio section real quick. Some folks wanted me to check out the text to speech uh, thing. And so to that end, I'm going to just sort of clean this up a little bit and add just add a couple more images so that there's something to uh, to work with visually. Yeah, regarding deals, clubs, dollars and stuff, you have to hit us and support Okay, Wendy, it's support at instantcontentcurator.com. Let's try to get a preview going here. We have a lot of awesome picks in here. We, we've been working on our image library for a year. I have, you know, heads have rolled over whether or not they're um, getting, you know, royalty-free images and stuff. So... I'm not going to say I, I can take responsibility, but I can vouch that we have really put a lot of time into making sure the images that we have are royalty free and can be used in a project. You know, we can't, you can't give them away and stuff. Tanya says that they spent, I would say it's more than hours Tanya. It was more like months. Um, Not sure, Rebecca, what you mean about the PowerPoint thing. This is, okay. Tanya, can you can you give them the support email to everyone? Support at instantcontentcurator.com. Also, guys, in case you didn't notice, we have this really awesome system right here that's built in. And it's called I, I made you an organizer, Tanya. It's called uh, Intercom. So you can, anytime that you need to ask me anything, you click on this icon right down here, and I really, really answer fast. I mean, whenever I see it, I just, I can help you more or less hold your hand through things that are going on for you. Um Yeah, oh, t oh, shit, I made the wrong person organizer. Sorry about that. Hold on. That was some. Um, how can I? Uh, sorry about that. Hold on. Okay, you're an organizer. Can you now make that other person not an organizer? <laughs> Thanks. Um, okay, still still great comments. I really appreciate everyone's comments. Um, Healthy setup for you. Isabel, very nice. Uh, Rebecca. Instantly add jazz. I, yeah, I know if you mean music jazz or what. Um, okay, so we've got this this thing made now. We've got this this video, and we're going to look at audio now because we've had questions about how to do this. <clears throat> uh, once again, if you are in the movie club or in the VidWorks Images and Music Pack, you have this extra premium music down here. Most of them are pretty long too. So it's like they're like five minute tracks and stuff. We also have regular users have this awesome uh, list to choose from. And there's some really, really good ones in here too. Uh, Party Rock is my favorite. <laughs> yeah, baby, let's go. I like that one. And uh, so let's say if I want that one to be
Uh, let's say if I want that one to be on my video, I just click this Save to Template. That's all I do. And it comes back around. And now we have this loaded. You can see the audio element is active. And now we want to add a voiceover. Here is the, the uh, text copy. And whatever here goes into the text copy is what's going to be converted into your text to speech. So let's see. Try that. Cloud Movie Machine is an awesome online video creation tool that always works 100 perfectly, especially when thousands of people are using it at the same time. Uh, I guess we'll have to spell out that percent there. Yeah, let's try that. Cloud Movie Machine is an awesome online video creation tool that always works 100%. Perfectly, especially when thousands of people are using it at the same time. Well, that's not bad, Gary, but you know what? I can make it better. And that's because um, I programmed a little trick into this that you can use. And the trick is to use a lot of commas. The commas will make it sound a lot more intelligent. Let me show you. Uh, Cloud Movie Machine is an awesome online video creation tool, comma, that always works 100% perfectly, comma, especially when thousands of people are using it, comma, at the same time. So that's maybe more commas than you would normally use, but listen to the inflection now that I've added that. Cloud Movie Machine is an awesome online video creation tool that always works 100% perfectly, especially when thousands of people are using it at the same time. So it's a little bit more um, intelligent that way, right? So, I mean, if you play around with it and just experiment, all you have to do is change the text and then click this Save Text. And now if you like it, you just click save to template, right? So we'll go ahead and save that. And if that comes up, just say, okay, leave the page. That's something I, I will fix as well. Um, and so now we'll hear what that sounds like. It's, it's now you see this element is active and we can. Cloud Movie Machine is an awesome online video creation tool. That always works 100% perfectly, especially. Okay, so now we can also see how the two tracks will sound together if we click play all. Cloud Movie Machine is an awesome online video creation tool. That always works. So what do you think? It's like the music's a little too loud for the voice, right? So we can mix that, and we do that with these volume knobs here. So I'm going to go ahead and... Click this and try it. Cloud Movie Machine is an awesome online video creation tool that always works 100% perfectly, especially when thousands of people are using it at the same time. Okay, so then I just click Save Volume. And I might as well click both of them. And then we can preview it with the visual. We click Publish Now and Regenerate the Preview. And with any luck, it's going to be regenerated. We're going to see that little video. I can also look behind the curtain since I'm the wizard. And I do believe it's working, so we will. Um, yeah, Gary, good question. Let me get that in a second. 
iCloud Movie Machine is an awesome online video creation tool that always works 100% perfectly, especially when thousands of people are using it at the same time. <laughs> okay. So obviously it goes on longer. And as I mentioned before, the length of your videos in the current format, and guys, I'm always thinking of new ways to cut this stuff together, but the way it works now is that it's going to take the length of the video from the, the visual content that you create. I had, I had like three different ways to, to do it. It was like, do we cut the length from the audio length and then try to fit all the visual into that? Or do we just create the visual based on a certain time and then overlay the audio on that? And what happened when we, we did it the first way is that people were trying to fit huge amounts of visuals into a short audio time and it was failing. So I just figured, you know, you can now have a lot more control over the length of your clips and stuff like that and so on and so forth. So let's continue with this little training here. Uh, Nathalie asked me a good question. Is there more than one voice available? And yeah, we do have more than one voice available. I'm not going to promise that they're that great, but actually there's, a, there's quite a bit of potential in, in it because I figured out how to actually program the vocal qualities. And I've spent a little bit of time working with it enough to know that, at, you know, in the future, I will be able to actually create a section where you can say, you know, I want the voice this high, I want it to talk this slow, I want it to have this much inflection, I want it to be more nasal, you know, stuff like that. And I've done a little bit of playing, as you can see in here, we've got all these different languages. We've got the Google female, and then we've got Hughes Experimental Voice. <laughs> Hughes Experimental Voice is the one where I started playing around with the voices, and it sounds pretty silly, but the, the idea is that I will be able to translate this into a control that you can use. If you stick with me, you're going to see that, you know, as we go down the road with this. But if you want to hear what one of these regular voices sound, for example, the Scottish, let's try the English one. And then we'll we'll listen to that. Cloud Movie Machine is an awesome online video creation tool that always works 100% perfectly, especially when thousands of people are using it at the same time. Okay. Now that's the you know that's that company's idea of what an English sounding voice is. Now you could also try different. Uh, languages, if you want to speak Spanish or French, you know, you could just choose the Spanish and it's going to use that inflection, for example. Let's see, what it's trying to do is interpret my language as Spanish, and that's obviously not going to work. So let's try Hughes Experimental Voice and see how that sounds. Cloud Movie Machine is an awesome online video creation tool that always works 100% perfectly, especially when thousands of people are using it at the same time. Okay, so that's one that I, you know, spent a little time playing around with. And, I mean, it's just a toy, it's a toy to play around with, right? Uh, you know, I added a lot of reverb just to have fun and see what it sounded like. It's It's actually part of the the package to add the reverb if you want it on there. So it was just experimental. That's why it's called experimental. Now Google does only offers the female voice that I know of. There are actually a couple of other text-to-speech tools that we could integrate depending on, you know, customer demand. There's one, um, is it called you speak, I don't remember. There's one that costs money, right? It's about, um, you know, a couple hundred bucks, but it's it, it's almost indistinguishable from a live human voice. So, you know, if there are people are enough people that want me to integrate that in there, and you want to go buy an account with that company, we can do that. 
Um, the better text-to-speech is really done on a desktop um, computer because you have a lot of voices on your desktop computer, but this is, you know, the best that we've been able to do online today. It will probably get better. Like I said, I have figured out a few things, so we'll be adding things all along. Do we have a teleprompter on dispatch? Well, basically, it's whatever it's in, in this box here, so that can be your teleprompter, right? Now, I want to show you also how we can do uh, record your own audio right here. This is how we do it, and hopefully it'll work because it does involve some, you know, some bandwidth. But we're going to start by creating a recording preview like this. And um, can also check behind the curtain, and yeah, it looks like that one's working. So, um, okay, so now we've got our recording preview here. What it's going to do is it's going to count down from 10, and then you're going to start recording. When you're ready to accept that recording, it's going to trim off that 10-second countdown for you. So let's just see if I can do this on GoToWebinar with 1,000 people jumping on my process. Let's find out. Hi, this is Hugh, and I want to welcome you to my awesome, awesome video. Don't forget to call me at 123-456-7890 before that box goes away. And there it goes. It just went away, and now we're going to another. Hey, this is the concert. It's a really groovy place, blah, 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 blah. My video. Now here's some blue lines coming down, blah, 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 so on and so forth. Etc. Etc. Things, baby, things. Yeah, things are really important. So don't forget about things when you see things. And now, infinity is an important concept to think about too when you see that. Finally, there's a lot of really interesting looking stars uh, streaming around in space. Okay, so that's my uh, impromptu voiceover. So you have the um, Hopefully you can still hear me while that's uploading, but it's you can see the video in front of you. You can see the timing. You can record your audio while you see the video. What I did not do was mix in the background music. I might do that for the recording preview, too. Um, so great. Thank you, Ron Dispatch. And... Um, one thing that I have mentioned before, and I'll mention it for you now, is that the audio data is saved as uncompressed wave audio data. And it is sent to our server as uncompressed wave audio data. When our server receives the whole wave audio data, then it sends a message back to the browser that, yes, we did receive that wave audio data. Yes, it's big. And then when you want to hit the playback, you're going to hit the play button, and it's going to re-download that wave audio data. So it takes a second between. To be honest, I don't even know if it's going to work today because of just this freakish amount of traffic that we have on the site right now. But that's right, it's completely high quality, uncompressed wave data. So when you do finally sign off on that recording, then um, it's going to convert it to a high quality MP3 and store it on your timeline. But until then, it's completely wave data. Okay, so now you'll notice that it says recorded audio data stored on server. So, you know, thankfully, Go to webinar allowed that. So now we want to hear it back. We want to click this button, the playback button, and it's going to re-download that uncompressed wave data. And we show you, you know, retrieving audio data for playback. And that's right, Rebecca. If you don't like the recording, you can dump it and redo it again. Now, obviously, the better internet connection you have the faster it's going to go. But it did go pretty fast this time, so here we go. Let's check out the preview.
Hi, this is Hugh, and I want to welcome you to my awesome, awesome video. Don't forget to call me at 123-456-7890 before that box goes away. And there it goes. It just went away, and now we're going to another. Uh, yeah, it sounds really good. And you should have a good microphone also. You know, that's part of it. I have a pretty decent... Uh, okay, so we're going to click that again to stop it. And so now I'm happy with that. I'm going to click Save Recording to Template. And it's going to say Leave this page. Yes, I'm going to leave that page. Hi, Alexander. And come on. Okay, now hopefully that worked. Did it work? Hi, this is Hugh. And I certainly did. Okay, so now we can redo the mix. Hi, this is Hugh. Welcome to an awesome, awesome video. Don't forget to call me at 123 456 7890 before that box goes away. And there it goes. It just went away, and now we're going to another. Hey, this is the concert. Okay, so I've got my. Background track, I've got my voiceover recorded, and now I'm going to generate my preview. Fingers crossed, everyone. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question, Jay Hodge. Why is it called a template? Great question. Well, it, that has to do more with what goes on in my twisted brain than anything else, I think, Jay Hodge, because... My idea, and which will be provided to you in the near future, is that you may use existing and published video projects as templates for new projects. And really it is a template because you're not sending a video to the rendering server. You're sending a, a template. You're sending an instruction, and the, and the rendering server follows your instructions to create your video. It's that's really exactly what it does. So you can do it fast. Now I'm definitely hoping that worked. Let me see. Uh, it might that might not have worked, and I, I do apologize for that. Um, like I said, we've got a thousand people jumping on it today, so that's going to it's going to be better. And I'm just going to refresh that page. I don't have to record it again. I still, you know, as soon as, as soon as you save things to your timeline, folks, it's there. It's not going anywhere. That's, you don't have to like save it. If you create an audio and, and sign off, okay, it's going to my timeline. Now this is just refreshed here. If I wanted to record again, I could, but I already have this. Hi, this is Hugh, and I want to welcome you to my awesome, awesome video. Don't forget. So the idea that I'm trying to do right now is just generate the preview, and we are getting a few failures just because of the freakish amount of traffic we have on the site right now from the launch. So just be patient, bear with me, and things will work. So let's see if that one's that one's working. So it looks like that one's caught me, and we're going to have a preview in just a few seconds, and there we go. Okay, so the preview worked. Hi, this is Hugh, and I want to welcome you to my awesome, awesome video. Don't forget to call me at 123-456-7890 before that box goes away. And there it goes. It just went away, and now we're going to another. Hey, this is the concert. It's a really groovy place, blah, 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 blah. My video. Now there's some blue lines coming down, blah, blah, so on and so forth. Etc. Etc. Things, baby, things. Yeah, things are really important. So don't forget about things when you see things. And now, infinities. <laughs> it's so much fun. I have fun with this. Um, okay, so you know, if you thought that was cool, great. If you thought it was the background was a little too loud, you could, you know, pull it down more. Or if I want to, I can just go ahead and cue that now. 
So I think I will. I'll just go ahead and let me see what I have for the main settings on this. This is just a nonsense video, SEO lunatic. Uh, I'm going to just change the title because we're not really about hotels anymore. So let's just go ahead and save that. This is what you do want to save is text stuff. Hey, Wendy, I kind of went over uploading a pictures about 20 minutes ago, which is um, with the slide creator. Anyway, let's go ahead and I've got that for the same preview already made. Again, it's bandwidth. Hi, this is you. And I want to so let's say I'm happy with that. I'm going to go ahead now and publish that. Now, if I have YouTube and everything programmed in, and if I have this checkbox turned on, then um, it's going to automatically distribute my video to YouTube, you know, Vimeo, and Daily Motion, whatever I have plugged in and it's furthermore going to take those links that it gets back from those and then second tier syndicate them to either send wire only wire or various link indexers and so on and so forth yes you can add st your own stock video r fromer yes you can now let me go ahead and just cue this and so we can go out to the next section and I'll come back then and we'll go over some other of these fine points. Maybe things will, you know, start to settle down. But you can see I have put a huge amount of videos through this system and continue to do so. Uh, this is the one that I just made and you can see it is in queue. If I wanted to now, I can remove it from the queue just now and put it back in to the editor, but that's only until it starts getting rendered. Okay, I can also turn off the auto distribute if I get it here and I decide, oh, wait a minute, I don't want that to go to YouTube. You know, I can just go ahead and turn it off here. For other videos that are here, you can always get the video by opening the green cloud or the blue film icon is what opens up videos that are already rendered in full size for you. And you can link, download them just like this. Save as MP4. Or you can get the link here and copy that link and go put it somewhere else or do you want. You can also get HTML5 embed code down here at the bottom for that video. If it's on YouTube, you can open it up in the YouTube viewer, and then you can see the, the YouTube share. You can also get the YouTube link and get the YouTube iframe embed. Same thing with Daily Motion and Vimeo. I don't think I have Vimeo on this account. I have it on some other ones. Let's see this one. So this one, I've got YouTube, Vimeo, and Daily Motion. And if they're already uploaded and distributed, they show as the green cloud. And if they're created for you and available on S3 but not distributed, they show as the blue icon of the film icon. If you don't want the videos to show up on this list anymore, you click this archive here and that will basically make the video disappear from this list so you can see them again by clicking show archive videos and then the ones that are archived kind of come up with this grayed out look to them <clears throat> let me check a couple of the questions <clears throat> yes the training is going to be added in the member area um, R. Fromer, you upload your, your own stock video using the clip editor section, which is in visual of the videos area. Which I'll show you real quick once again. And, um, 
once again, you go to this area, the clip editor, and you click add video, and you put in a link. And I've explained this before, but you have to find your own uploading, your own cloud file hosting for your videos. But you just upload them there, and then you put the link in here, and it transfers it to our server. So we have enough bandwidth issues without having people uploading gigabytes of files to our server. Um, David Taylor, what is my overall conception in producing video for offline businesses? Well, I've already proved that you can rank uh, for offline business with the minimal effort. Just go to the go to the home page, click this big button right here, and then watch this video. Case study number one. That will answer your question, okay? Is the training going to be out of the member area? Yes. Isabel, not sure if you saw, but could you please show us how to do that process with pre-recording from an MP3 file? Okay. Um, let me go back to that project. What is daily motion? Daily motion is a French version of YouTube, more or less. Okay. Um, now, you wanted to know, Isabel, about how you can add your own audio to a project. And what you're going to do is you're going to go to the audio section here. You're going to scroll down and add your file. The files, though, have to be named a certain way. You can only add at this time. Now, as I said, you know, I'm always thinking of new ways to do things. But right now, the only way to add... A, a an mp3 is by naming it either background.mp3 or voiceover.mp3 for obvious reasons now if you uh, what was I gonna say okay so let me just go ahead and add this one this is called background mp3 it's actually a three megabyte file. <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's going to be take a little while. But that's going to be about four, four minutes of music. The thing is, if I only make one minute worth of visual, then it's going to create a one minute video and apply one minute of the audio to the one minute of visual content. Now you want to know how to delete a template slash project and all you have to do is go to and I can actually do this while this is uploading I can you you go to the videos and you select the video of the template that you don't want to keep and you just click delete right not that hard Let's see our uploads going. Still got a ways to go. You know, it's that bandwidth issue again. Now, got some other questions here. Um, <clears throat> are you thinking about an opt in feature to collect leads from videos? Well, you know, Mr. Mangan, that's actually a different product. We make videos. We don't sell products with videos. I mean, that's what you want to do. So what you want to do is go find one of those WSOs that has um, a video opt-in form and then just put it on your video that you made with Cloud Movie Machine. Does that make sense? So you're sort of like saying, is this product another product? No, this is a thing that makes videos and shares them. It doesn't. We're not really involved with opt-in boxes and all that. 
right? Um, yeah, Isabel, if, if there's a valid project selected, that delete button should be visible. It's possible you just were on the new section when you when you tried that, you know, new template. It's not going to show. What is a mini, Scott? A mini video is exactly the same as the preview, exactly the same as that preview that we're always looking at. It's 360 pixels by 202 pixels. Believe it or not, that's all you need to make tons and tons of money if you know how to video market. But, <clears throat> you know, that's up to you. We give you unlimited mini videos with your option. For most, most of you have unlimited mini videos. So you can just create videos at the yin-yang with those. When that happens, all you do is just cue it as a mini vid. Antique, antique, can we upload our own video to our project? I think I've answered this one about five times already today, and I'm happy to answer it again. You go to videos, get a video project loaded, click visual, click clip editor, click add video. I'm pretty sure this upload section is going to go away here because I've already shown you the best way to upload images is through this slide creator just like this the, but uh, as far as video you upload it in the clip editor um, what would recommend to do in order to sync a video to pre-recorded voice that's not not so easy uh, that we have now, really. That's not really the easiest thing to do, Isabel. So I don't really have any tips for you since, as I explained, you know, I had several options in how to make this thing work and how to make it easy for people to use it and not get kind of caught up in the details. And the question is, you know, do we apply the visual to the audio or do, do we apply the audio to the visual, right? We try to keep it loose so people can do what they want. And the first time around, we were trying to match the visual to the audio and there were so many problems with that because people were adding too many items to the timeline and trying to cram them all into a small bit of audio and it was crashing. So we stopped that. We just said, you know, make your visual and then apply the the uh, the voice over on top of the visual. And that's how it works now. Now, we may change that in the future, but that's what it is now. Cool. Uh, Petra Burt. Petra Burt. <laughs> Colin, my pleasure. Did I answer your question, Colin? I hope I did. Um, Petra Burt, if a host, if I host a video to upload to Cloud Movie Machine, is that video required to remain on on my server? I'm not really quite sure what you mean as far as adding a video to the clip editor. Yes, you have to have your own upload. I think I've explained this a couple times today already, and I'm happy to explain it again. We, at the current time, I don't have direct uploading to us of your videos because we're having enough bandwidth issues as it is that we're not going to open up a lot of big file uploads to, to the server. We made a really, really super easy answer for you, which is go get an Amazon S3 account, which is pennies, if that. It's free to start not selling you anything. Just go get an Amazon S3 account, store your files there, make them public readable, and get a link, and stick your link right in here. That's what I've done for all that stuff. Uh, 
That, that's a good question, Wendy. If you go through S3 account, can we upload video and audio already together? Well, that's what a video is. A video is video and audio already together. So if you add a video, you're adding a video that has video and audio. The thing about it, though, is that we don't um, we don't edit audio in this in this software yet and we will be at some point but right now we don't edit the any audio that you pass in in a video right you follow me so um, the only audio that we have available is background tracks you upload your own audio in the upload audio section you create a text-to-speech you record your own voiceover, or you select a, one of our music tracks. That's what we have for audio options right now. Got a lot of more questions coming in. I'm happy to answer them all. Um, I think I missed um, Joan's question about if there's already too many using the system. The thing is you gotta understand about why there's people using the system right now, so many, is because it's the launch. That's that's only gonna be the only time in history that we have this problem, I promise you. Because we've got super affiliates mailing to thousands of people and thousands of people are trying to jump on right now. So it's, the system actually works quite well unless the server chokes and that's kind of what's happening right now so okay um other questions yeah it'll die down soon i'm sure it will um yeah that's right the video will have no sound wendy after you cut whatever you want from it it's not going to have the sound that comes with it until i create that feature which i do plan to have that as well I have some actually really interesting plans for audio stuff that we're going to be adding in. Thanks, Wendy. Says I'm really doing great. Thank you, Wendy. I really, really appreciate that. And we will rock on. Um, okay, Gary. Can I fully explain the credits? Absolutely. Okay, let's see. I'll just write it up here so you so it makes sense, so you can see it in front of you. It's actually pretty simple. One video queued and rendered costs you one of the credits that you bought. Okay? That's as, it's as simple as that. You've got a certain amount of high def credits. HD equals a video that's um, what is it, 1280 by 720, which is also referred to as 720p high def in the video industry. That's what a high def credit is. SD equals 640 by 360, which is still a, you know, it's a decent sized video and looks good. Now, when I first started out, we weren't even doing any of these. We we're doing 640 by 480 and 360 by 240. But I had people saying, well, if you can't say that you've got HD video, then you ain't, <laughs> you ain't stuff, right? So I said, okay, so we'll do HD. So we put in HD, and that's 1280 by 720. We moved everything to 16 by 9 widescreen and now everything is 16 by 9 widescreen from the minis to the high high def 
Um, but SD still is perfectly good. And like I told you, you can make money with 360 by 202 videos, which is the mini. You know, I know what the mini is. Mini equals 360 by 202 pixels. It's exactly the same dimensions as the video that you see in the main preview when you generate your preview. That is the mini vid. So we have given you the option to just queue as the mini vid and that way you can do it in unlimited quantities and you can practice and you can get to learn how it works and you can do your minis until you feel comfortable and then you can start queuing high def and, and standard def videos, right? It's just um, I mean, that's just so many ways. You can just really, really, there's, it's very versatile, the things you can do. Uh, the credit is used, Gary, when you queue it and after it's rendered, then we consider that a spent credit, whether or not you distribute it or not, because it's already taken the bandwidth from our system. A <laughs> tiny, tiny bit of it, in fact. Uh, but that's how it goes. We don't charge for, you know, the uploading stuff after that. It's just getting it rendered. Rendered means, <clears throat> Pris Gold meant rendered means um, yeah, if you're more familiar with the idea of analog video, like videotape and um, that sort of thing, then you, you might not understand what rendering means. And in this day of digital video, um, a video consists of a huge stream of binary data. And um, sometimes it exists as instructions, you know, rather than the video. So what, what rendering does, it basically takes the instructions and execute the instructions in order to produce a file which is the final video file and that's what rendering is is referred to and it's it's a lot of number crunching it's a very very cpu intensive process if you create a video on your computer at home using camtasia or adobe premiere or something or adobe after effects and then you want to export that movie to a file that's when you your computer does the rendering and it often will take hours on your own computer to do it because of the fact that we have these super high-speed internet servers the actual rendering of the video is not that does not take anywhere near as long as your desktop computer would do so something that your desktop computer might be tied up for a half hour crunching numbers, our servers can do that in about one minute. You know, um, so that's, you know, part of the benefit too. Every time you see a preview, that's a rendered preview. It has been already rendered. <clears throat> that's why we give you the option where you can just queue it. You know, after you render a preview, you can just like, uh, Q as is, you know, and then it doesn't take us any more bandwidth and it doesn't take you anymore. So that's why we offer unlimited uh, mini vids because you already get them in your preview. So you might as well have the option to publish them as well. And you can do that and just sort of get used to the system until you want to start spending your high def and standard def credits. A lot of people are asking me, how they can get more credits and um, you know I don't really have a big plan in place or how I'm gonna you know get people to buy more credits or anything in fact as you can see we're kind of you know really just dealing with the situation we're in right now however there is this movie club available that gives you a pretty gigantic amount of credits if you buy it right now for $97. And that link is available in the homepage of Cloud Movie Machine slash, yeah, it's in the homepage of Cloud, Cloud Movie Machine at the bottom of the page. So if you log in and go to the homepage, 
just scroll down, you're going to see that option for you to get those credits. As far as after the launch is concerned, I don't know what I'm going to charge for credits. I don't plan on gouging anyone, but we're going to have to evaluate and just see, you know, what it's really going to be worth going forward. <clears throat> Probably it's not going to be quite as cheap as it is now. It's, I mean, this is the cheapest we've ever thought. I wasn't even really paying attention when those guys um, came up with those numbers, you know. So uh, the end of the launch, I think it's 24 hours more. I mean, it's either tonight at midnight or tomorrow at midnight when it's finished. I'm not sure. We will leave this offer open to you for a while, you know, at least a few days or a week. And then there will be other opportunities too. Hi, Don, in Eastern Canada. Yeah, this is being recorded, so hopefully we'll have a good recording for you when it's done. Can we download the queued videos? Yeah, absolutely. Um, actually, the videos are only queued really until they're rendered and then they're available to you. And then they're not really even queued anymore. They're just in your data list, right? For example, uh, if I go to data over here, Then you can see I have my data. This is my data console where I have listed all the videos for this particular account that I've been, you know, promoting out there and stuff. And if I wanted to just get a video, I just click. It's either the blue film icon or the green cloud icon, depending on whether it's distributed. You open that up, and now, well, this is from a test from before. So if you open it up, and now you have the video. And, and so now you can view the video, you can get the link here and download that video directly to your computer and do whatever you want with it or pass it around or whatever. Okay. Oh yeah, John, I definitely spent basically dedicated my life to this for the last year. Um, thank you, John. So anyway, I, I do um, promise you that it's going to smooth out as soon as this launch is over. It's just that there's like hundreds, hundreds, if not thousands of people jumping on it all at the same time. So they all want to get in and use it right away. So <clears throat> it's going to get better. Exactly, JM, JM Stacks. If you make a video that totally sucks or didn't work out or something. I, yeah, we, we will reimburse you the credit on that. Sure. I don't have any problem with that. I'm a pretty laid back guy. You no, know? you can make intros and outros run dispatch, and then you can add them to your project using that clip editor. Okay. It's like super easy to do that. You don't have to put them on YouTube, but you do have to put them somewhere on the internet that the Cloud Movie Machine can grab them and download them. <clears throat> uh, yeah, if you're in the monthly um, movie club, those credits will roll over. Okay. I would recommend getting the yearly, though, because it's just the – it's it's about 20% of the price that you'll pay, I think, if you sign up monthly. Okay, cool. Well, in that case, it's not a rollover because you've already got added all those credits at one time, 240 standard and 120 HD credits. Um. <clears throat> Okay, awesome, John. Um, yeah, all right. <laughs> That's so good, good stuff, Funkmeister. All right. Funkmeister H, that's me. Um, if you already have an intro done, get an S3 account, upload that intro, 
add it into the clip editor and just add that clip to your timeline. Then you can drag it to the beginning of your project and it'll render with um, the other stuff. Okay. All right. Okay, so it kind of looks like we may be coming, you know, I could spend, <laughs> believe me, I could spend all night here, but it's, I think the best thing is if we come back in a week or so and we do this when the bandwidth has died down a little bit so I can actually show you things that actually do get created <laughs> rather than pulling my hair out every time. And um, I want you guys to know that I am totally here for you anytime, okay? And you should join my Facebook group if you're not in it already. If you need me, click on this blue question mark thing down here, and I'll get back with you probably within an hour or so if I'm not sleeping, which I don't do much of these days. <laughs> And um, my Facebook group, let me give you the Facebook group in case you don't have it yet. Okay, I just sent that group out to everyone in the chat, so I hope everybody joins. <clears throat> I don't really have a group for this application but we can actually handle it in that group and I'm glad you have a little more understanding Gary um, Rebecca I'm, I'm really pleased to to have you on board and the same goes for everyone <laughs> thanks Isabel uh, there's there's well over 100 people on the call today. I'd like to go down the list and thank each and every one individually, but that's going to take a little too long. And Wendy, I'm glad that this um, th this made you feel good. You know, made you feel good about being involved with this, and and you should. It's it's only going to get better. And thanks, Gary. <laughs> I will get some sleep and. Um, Ron Dispatch, Char Smith, Jay Hodge, uh, Adrian. What's up, Adrian? Um, Rebecca, Isabel, you guys are so great. And um, thank you for being here. So John Elmore, peace, peace and love. And T, Helen, great to have you on board. Ra Raj Vastrad, a man. What's up? Jeff Sasso, GVZS, Jeff Holman, how you doing? Haven't talked to you for a while. Um, Yoli, looks like we got everything recorded, so uh, we'll have this recording later. So I'll talk to you guys later. Okay, thanks again for being here, and thanks for being a customer, and I'll talk to you soon. Good night, everybody. <laughs>